So honestly, this is where we need to be having this conversation of like the yeah. perfection. It is such a thing that so many of my clients try to achieve. And yeah. as much as polished and on top of things and everything that I try to be for my social media and for the show, of course, like, I think it's so endearing. Like I had a client once who had just gotten a new puppy, like a couple of weeks before we started. And she just had to be like, I'm sorry, hold on. Um, <laughs> like none of us can relate to the idea of a new puppy. I know of having because, a new something. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's so helpful when we can just be like, look, here we are. I don't care what's behind <laughs> me in this background. What I care more is about is what we're about ready to say on this show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, it is such a pleasure to have you on for the people huh. listening. We have been planning this since, I mean, it's been ages. Last year, and then maybe <laughs> summer is just so hard. Like it's so, and you just keep thinking too, which is really funny. I've had this conversation a lot with clients of like, um, when does, th when do things slow down? And it's like, well, let's see, we're going into October, which means we're working on Halloween costumes. And then we've got Thanksgiving, which means we've got travel. And then we've got Christmas, which means the whole time we've been shopping. Yes. <laughs> no break. It's like the holiday, like trifecta or something just keeps. Yes. And then was it New Year's and then New Year's resolutions. Keep yes. Going. Which I mean, I think our, I do think are wonderful. I love the idea of like a fresh start. I think the reason why, of course, is that we start yeah. with that of like, it's a new year, new me. It's a fresh start. Like, yes, on Monday yeah. I'm doing this or whatever, but also it is trying to figure out like, how do we then sustain that change, which is <laughs> tough once the energy and the novel uniqueness. It's too is. much work. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah. Well, I actually, I don't want to jump into it. No. Now, we're going to start with, I'd love to hear how you got into what you do, because what I was going to start yeah. with how we actually connected, and it's a very heavy topic, which we are going to jump into. But let's let's um, let's um learn a little bit more about you before we just get right on into it. <laughs> cool. Okay. So I'll try to do the short version, but I, I um, went on a mission trip when I was like a senior in high school to Africa. And I was like, this is super cool. And my mom was like, you can't pay the bills by being a missionary, which I know you can. But so I was like, okay, I'm going to go in the medical field because I like medical things. So I started going to nursing school um, and I started watching Call the Midwife, which if you're any sort of birth worker, you know <laughs> about the show. Um, and I was like, oh, this looks really cool. Maybe I'll catch babies. I also like have always loved kids, always babysitting kids, but I'm like, I don't want to do that forever. You know, mm -hmm. they're not like intellectually fun after like a date, you know, they can't hold like an adult conversation. Really? It's very repetitive, you know, mm -hmm. nothing fun really happens besides like smiles and, you know, little things. Yes. Um, so I started school with the goal of being a nurse midwife, but I was like in my twenties and I was like, I've never been to a birth. I never had a baby. I don't know if I even like that, you know, <laughs> if I even like birth and I'm going to go get my master's in something. Yes. But it's um, so interesting of so, like the thing, the expectation of like, Hey, you're 16. What do you want to do for the rest of your life? Which I know if I may go on a brief tangent, if you yeah. don't, if you forgive me, but like, it is a great energy. I want to, as I said that of like, I mean, I started out in business. I worked on wall street. I went back and got a master's degree and I'm now in a therapist, but like, and that what privilege upon which I sit to be able to afford to do all of that. And there is such an educational boundary and everything is systemically yeah. oppressive in this country. I'll go on, but just the <laughs> idea of like, if you chose to do something at 16, 17, when you were in high school in the US, and then you decided to go to college, like the fact that that doesn't have to be the thing that you do for the next yeah. 50 years. But it's scary because it's, it's just kind of now like it starting is. to be okay. At first, it was like, that's what you say you do. So that's what you gotta do forever. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize for my tangent. But I was like, it no, just, you're yes. fine. It definitely, it definitely rains true. I definitely still have student loan bills. <laughs> Same, same, same. That, from a degree that I did not get because I went on a whole different path. Um, so I heard about a doula from like my chiropractor and I had no idea what that was because this was 
like 2014. So they weren't like all the rage that they are now. They were still like <laughs> up and on the scene. Um, so I did some research and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And I can get my foot in the door for birth. That's really <laughs> why I just to like get in the birth room and see if I liked being there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I did that. And then I continued on my nursing journey. I could have had a degree with how long it took me, but it just, it just wasn't where I was supposed to be. So it kept not working out. <laughs> um, Because I was in university, then I switched to like a local community college. And I was like, okay, I'll just get my RN instead of my bachelor's because that wasn't working at that school. They had one teacher that taught one class that I could not pass. And like, if it's only your teaching style and, you know, like... <laughs> not working um so I switched schools and I was like probably I had like a year left and I failed a class by a point and at this time I started doing birth so I'd seen out of hospital birth and in hospital birth and I was doing clinic as a nurse like student student nurse and I was like I don't like this I don't like the hospital (laughs) but like you said when you're like this is what I said I was gonna do and you're on that trajectory and you're like I've my parents have spent all this money and like I was doing all this time like I'll keep trying um but yeah when they when they brought me to the dean's office and they were like you could either restart the whole program which what or you could like go be a patient care tech or something I'm like no 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 I'm done I'm not doing this anymore um so but I don't like taking breaks so probably like the next semester I jumped right into just CPM because I had learned about that which is certified professional midwife um and I was like yeah I want to do that anyway I don't want to be in the hospital but I still want to be a midwife and I don't want to have to jump through policies and procedures and see if people like me be mistreated (laughs) Um, so yeah, so now I'm, I think I have one semester left at midwifery school and I'm like primarying and catching babies and doing all the, all the stuff. And then I did do a, still do do a stuff, but not mm-hmm. as much. So short version <laughs> where I'm at now. Yeah. So, yeah. And I do like birth obviously, cause that was 2014 and I'm still doing it now and I love every time I go it's always something new it's always fun I tell you what uh repetition and boredom are not something that you're going to see in the doula field (laughs) yeah yes exactly I tell people like there might be like very similar births but no (laughs) birth is ever exactly the same no absolutely yeah, that's so great. Well, that's and that's what we were talking about. You mentioned there's just again, like some of the systemically oppressive or systemically many things situations yeah. that occur in the United States, particularly with birth, particularly with women of color. Mm-hmm. And the re- so now now here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the research. <laughs> the reason. No, well, the reason why. <clears throat> excuse me. Why I had first reached out to you was yeah. with Chrissy Anderson, the former chief cheerleader passed away of sepsis following yes. the stillbirth yes. and and I, she was probably perfectly healthy she probably was going to the gym like every single day like you know like yeah. there was she probably had no health risk she mm-hmm. had a perfectly normal mm-hmm. pregnancy yeah yeah and so just I, I know that you and I were both so distraught by the idea of her specific story and the fact that that just resonates so much throughout the country and the lack of yeah. safety in so many spaces um of all of that and so uh, it's just been interesting to see and it's been so great to follow you and kind of talking about the advocacy pieces that you have and the education pieces like you said earlier like in 2014 did we even know what a doula was like, yeah no not really did we, right and I remember and that's when I was getting <laughs> calls like especially when I first started like I didn't know a black there was a black doula and I'm black and I want that and I didn't even know that was an option yeah and well, I mean, obviously I marketed myself, but people were just hiring me to have someone look like them in the room, which is crazy. It's so, it's so true. So literally, I've told this story in the show before. Um, when I interviewed with Dallas Independent School District for their ther- a therapist position, the mm-hmm. um, the man who was in charge of the center where I was 
where I ended up working, um, was a Latino descent and a man, which mm -hmm. in the industry is, is not wildly unheard of, but definitely one of the few where women um, outnumber the men's, particularly in social work, which he was not a social worker, but anyway. And yeah. he told me straight to my face in my interview, he's like, well, I'd love a black man who speaks Spanish, but since black men who speak Spanish aren't often available as therapists, I'm going to hire you, a white woman who does not speak Spanish, which we are working on it. We are working. Why I took German in high school, it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life, but like not useful in the United States. So anyway, um, but it's so true. And how, again, like there are so many barriers to entry in so many of these places. And so the yeah. opportunity for somebody to have somebody like you, I'm sure they jumped at it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I took Spanish in, in like three years and I don't remember. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Spanish should be, don't get me on my soapbox. Spanish should be compulsory starting in kindergarten in all states in the United States. Why we don't, that's why everyone in Europe speaks English because they have to compulsory take uh, English and then they take a quote foreign language as they get into what it, in Germany it's called gymnasium, but like in high school. Yeah. And we're setting ourselves up for failure, not obviously from a political standpoint, which again, this is not a political podcast, but just even so far as like these tiny brains, they're meant to take on. Yeah, they're ready like, to like absorb all the, when my child just now actually he put on elmo with the tablet but it's in spanish and i'm like what if maybe you're yeah, absorbing spanish. some languages yeah <laughs> i listen to like spanish shows and then i think even like russian or something hmm. yeah i don't know why he likes the language i don't know if he knows what's happening but i'm sure he knows a little bit because his and do you mind me asking how old he is he just turned to, well, not just, but like this summer in August. Yeah, yeah. So think about like whether or not he understands. Like I had so many friends when I lived in New York from other countries say that they learned English by watching Friends. And like you don't start right. out watching Friends in English, not knowing English and understanding what's going on. But the more that you put in that effort. So like the more that your son's willing to do that, I say, I mean, I'm not an English or um, a language <laughs> specialist, but like. It's not going to hurt him. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine. I used to put on. Um, so I. I'm obsessed with Harry Potter, <laughs> unabashedly. And so I would put it on, I got the audiobooks in German and in Spanish. And I'm like, I don't really know what they're saying in terms of Spanish, but like I, every so often they'll say a word that grounds me back in the situation. So I'm like, you know oh, they're happening. in the room of requirement right now. Oh, okay. And let me keep listening. So like context clues for adults and for kids. Yeah. He's just going to all of a sudden start yeah. saying stuff to you in Russian and you're going to be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes, das Vidanya. <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. And I love subtitles too as a person, but then I'm like, I know that's supposed to be good for them too. Like they're hearing the word and they're seeing it. In the word. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't known that. Man, we're going on a whole childhood education tangent and I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> so, so many of my listeners are, I mean, it's a whole thing. I, I'm just going to enjoy this tangent. So my son just started at a school and we literally bought this house because it's walking distance to his oh, elementary cool. school, which is nicely rated. And then I found out after he'd already started that there was a Spanish immersion program at the other elementary school, which we would have to drive through. It's not that far. What privilege. But like he's <laughs> already started there and I'm on yeah. the PA board. I bought the shirts, which is again, small potato compared to him being able to so I actually have oh, a you're call. like I'm so committed <laughs> I, I am like I and so I actually literally have a call after this with the Spanish immersion program director of like what are my options what can we do for that because like little white boy needs to learn how to speak Spanish like we did not need <laughs> to sit in this place of privilege and just be like yeah. English no I'm setting him up for so much success to be able to do that but also you know, it's not just that one thing that isn't a factor. So I just know that it's such a relatable thing for parents everywhere of like, do I do this? Do I do that? What about the money? Yeah. What about this? And ah! All the things to think about raising tiny humans. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I just thought that was really interesting. Um, again, talking about Chrissy Anderson, she was that she was a cheerleader for the Chiefs. Um, she was 40 years old, which I know, I don't know, actually was kind of curious. What are your thoughts on the expression of geriatric birth? Is that something that you all? I mean, I can say as a student midwife, especially, well, I don't know if this is the case. I think maybe when you're diverse in the community, so my preceptor is also Black. She's a nurse midwife, but we're at a birth center. Um, and she is kind of older, but I don't even think it's that. I think that just because of her skin color and she's like more minority. And then I think, you know, our culture is like have babies 
early, but a lot of cultures like have fun, live their life, and then in their thirties, that's when they start having kids. Yes, yeah. Um, so we've been seeing a lot of like advanced maternal age, like moms yes. in their thirties, and like they have babies out of hospital just fine. Yes, we, I just called baby yesterday. A mom in her thirties, Latino. She did great. Came yeah. in, had a baby, left like. No complications, no reason. Also, I, just, I just love caught a baby, catch a baby. I just love, I love <laughs> that because I do think, and I, I'm curious to explore this a little more with you of like how rigid United States um, hospitals are in birthing. Um, what is the word requirements or I don't want to say plans because that's not the word I'm looking for, but like yeah. you have to be on your back and you have to be doing this and like da da da. And it's like the same as using the toilet, which is why squatty potties exist. Not a sponsor of this podcast, by the way. But like <laughs> we were meant squatty to be. Squatty potties are great. <laughs> They're so great. It's so physically good for you. I was just hiking in arches again, what privilege in Utah. And they literally had like covered holes in the ground. And there's literally a, a wow. an image of somebody squatting over the, the hole. And it's like, because wow. that's the natural way of you. And I know people, some people are so turned off by this topic, but like, we're here to talk about our bodies and like, yeah we're meant to squat to, to have a bowel movement and like yeah. squatting down. How did people back in the cave days pop exactly. out babies? That's true. We just had, we had, had two births in two days. That's <laughs> like, yes. but we had a mom, she was an advanced maternal age, but her first birth was a C-section, which, oh. you know, here's like, oh, the doctors are like, okay, let's, like, I have a friend that had her C-section. She's pregnant again. And she's like, yeah, I know the day I'm going in, I'm getting my C-section. It's, like, so common. And it shouldn't be. Because it's not. What? If you ever have the opportunity, anyone, to be in a C-section, you'll be like, oh, this isn't great. Like, it's not fun. It's not cute. Like, the mom is having a horrible time. And she doesn't have that first moment with her baby. Mm -hmm. Even if they try to let that happen because she's obviously going through surgery and like, you know, it's, it's hard, yes. but this mom, again, like going back to her. Um, so she had her V bag, but we were trying to figure out, like, she came in ready to push, but when, you know, it's your first baby, it's like, how do I push? Where do I use yes. the muscles? And the place that she pushed her baby out the most effectively was on the toilet. Hey, Right. <laughs> but again not lying back at a 45 degree angle with her legs no. up in ups. yeah no and everybody is everybody is physically different and yeah. allowing that space I think that's what's so beautiful for you all and what you do is like let's try this let's try that and again so I, yeah. I mean, I'll give you my my birth stories my first one I went into yeah. labor right after midnight on my due date and I'm like oh my gosh this baby's gonna be here perfect the morning. <laughs> and then it ended up it ended up 7 25 p.m c-section and it was and they did they did try a bunch of different things in the peanut and the side and da, 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 ba, 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 but like I was never squatting I was never put on the toilet there's nothing yeah because they can't once they hook you up you know they're like literally they're chained to their own procedures they made because once they put you in the bed and they're like oh you need these monitors oh you need these IVs oh we can't really do the positions that would really help baby come out mm -hmm. because of yeah there yeah. yeah and this is not a judgment on people who want a hospital birth I did both of mine were planned to be in the hospital and yeah. that, that, to me is what made the most sense um but so yeah. this isn't like a, oh how dare you I just want everybody to keep in mind again because like we were talking about doulas not being even really known of in 2014 mm -hmm. it is wild to me how much I didn't know I didn't specialize in perinatal mental health when I gave birth yeah. time yet so of course I learned many things since that but like how much stuff I didn't know as a mental health professional to be able to ask or to be able like I have a client right now who's on her second pregnancy and I had to tell her about Aeroflow she had no idea she was like I'm not really sure what to do about like pump pieces it was so frustrating last time I was like you haven't heard of Aeroflow like they go through your <laughs> pumps and they send them to you yeah you should get them. everyone gets a free pump everyone because they pump. learned that they spend they're spending less money and the babies are healthier so they want to cover it so they don't yeah, have to like, cover well. it later yeah, just like, don't when get the me babies are sick and having a lot of doctor's appointments because their stomach's messed up from formula. Yeah. So so I don't wanna I don't wanna ever dissuade anybody from a hospital birth if that's what you're doing. I just wanna say, like, to be able to ask these questions while you're at the hospital if that's what you decide. And so when they were doing my C section, my doctor had said that my internal pelvis was very narrow. So that got me very anxious because I've, we don't need to traumatize people here, but I've heard of other people's stories of babies getting stuck and we're good. That's all. Yeah. 
And so with my second, my doctor was very excited for me to try a VBAC. And then I started panicking. And so then we did schedule a plan C section and it was luxurious up until the point that they ripped out all of my internal organs and I had to recover. <laughs> exactly. But the idea of getting to go in at 6 a.m. on a Monday, very planned, was a nice thing. But yes, it is uh, yeah, it's, um, and it's still, you know, I'm sure like it wasn't like, okay, right. As you come in, you have the C-section. It's still like you're waiting. It's still a waiting game, no matter what you decide to do. I walked in at 545 in the morning and had a baby at six or at, um, 936. So that literally there's the math on that. And that's, that's probably pretty quick for some people, but, um, yeah. but yeah, and you're right. So my first one, I, they had given me this medication and I was like, I'm allergic to Benadryl, I'm not allergic, like anaphylactically, but like my body does not process it well on my arms. I couldn't keep him still. And I was like ch- yeah. teeth chattering. I was obviously in shock in some way. So I didn't hold him for ages. Oh, wow. Even when we yeah. got to the, to the room, I would like, so they take a picture of him being held by my spouse yeah. by my head and I was like, hi, but my arms were like, <laughs> sh- like not strapped to the gurney, but like at any But basically like flat and right. out. Yeah. And then I was back in the hospital and this is a very specific thing to me. I'm sure there are a handful of us out there who have this re- reaction to Benadryl. But, like I wouldn't hold him. I was like, I can't keep my hands straight. Like I can't do that. To hold him. Yeah. I've to had moments like that. And it's, I mean, it's different, obviously, when you have someone in the room with that knowledge, like as a doula, I'm like, okay, it's fine if you really want to breastfeed, I will hold your baby. I will hold your boob. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Person, but like, let's do it because it's good for you and it's good for him. Or, yeah. And that's, and I'm like, uh, that would have been a really cool opportunity for me to. Yeah. Have to do but if no day. one's in the room that knows that, and even, you know, our medical people should know that, yeah. but they're just like focused on, okay, let's weigh the baby. Okay. Let's give you the drugs. Okay. Let's do the task and be done. Yeah. And so for my second, I was grateful because they like the, the, the sheet was up and they like dropped the sheet, but the plastic was still up. Oh and so there's a cute God. picture of me, like touching her with my finger. And oh my and goodness. And, That's and they, so cute. They went and, and they do what you're saying. Like, cause usually when they, you catch the baby, then you just plop them right on the mom's chest, which is such a beautiful thing that I will never experience. So they like went and cleaned her up yeah. and then put it on me, which was still nice, but it, it was nice to do different hospitals and see different things and have different, yeah. different options there. But it's just a nice thing when you say catch a baby. I'm like, oh, what about the, what a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> just a, a regular Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, just a regular Tuesday. Pulling a human out of a human. No big deal. No big deal. But I will, if we want to go back to the Black women and the births that are not great, even like years ago, like with Serena's birth and she had, Whoa. I think she had preeclampsia, Serena Williams, and mm-hmm. then like, Beyonce she had twins so she had a c-section but still I think she had a lot of other complications I think she had preeclampsia postpartum or something just mm-hmm. like yeah they have all the money in the world they have all yes. the status in the world and yes. it doesn't matter because of the color of their skin and yeah. find me find me I challenge you my friends a person on this planet who is in better shape than Serena Williams find I know me. so don't blame it on Whatever y'all like to go out there and blame it on. Oh, they're this yeah. and that and blah, blah, blah. No. Yeah. No. Healthy. No. Wealthy. Super healthy. Every time I see her, like, legs and arms, I'm like, oh, my friend. <laughs> Crack a walnut with those. They're, legs. like, this big. I know. Like, muscle. So yeah. great. It's but, gorgeous. And that yeah. was something that I was really grateful for in this most recent Olympics, um, where people still feel so entitled to talk about women's bodies. And yeah. the women were clapping back and they were like, no, they didn't say, no one said this, but in my mind, I'm like, I could literally crush your skull between my arm right now. Yeah. My body looks like this and I'm crushing life. Like get yeah. out of here. <laughs> get out. <laughs> like who cares? Especially the ones that are like pregnant and doing stuff or the pictures of moms breastfeeding. I thought it was so cool. That was so cool because we know like Allison Felix was basically dropped by Nike when she gave birth, which is just absolutely yeah, wild. which is crazy. I, yeah, what, uh, what, uh, I just I don't even have like I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with. I ran track since fourth grade. Um, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Allison Felix specifically. So like the idea when I read that, I was just like, first of all, like you're giving up your golden goose. Why would you do yeah. that? Yeah. And what an antiquated thinking process to be like, well, she had a baby. She's no longer useful to us. There's the door. Because there's so many women. That's women. Women have babies and 
like could market it you have a big old market women yeah. having <laughs> yeah so it's really lovely in these last olympics to see the nursing rooms and the spaces available in the olympic in the yes. olympic village and all of that where we realize that women are not just here to make babies that they can do many things and that babies are not the end of the world yes yeah yeah uh oh, I hear it. Speaking of, I hear a baby. <laughs> the two-year-old. Let's see it. <laughs> Keep crying. All right, we are, we are back. Let's do it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, starting this conversation of perfection is not real. How relatable. <laughs> like, yes. Sometimes we have to pivot. Um, yes. But yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, I was wondering what your thoughts are. The idea of, especially, my goodness, so I had my infertility issues, so many people who yes. listen do, the idea of having any sort of control, haha, in fertility, in pregnancy, in any of that, in childbirth, but the idea also of like, what is the thing that we can do, in your view, to set ourselves up for the most success ahead of, during pregnancy, giving birth, knowing what questions, uh -huh. what does that look like yeah. for you in practice? Um, I mean, I think I was just working on it last night, but um, I ran through to like childbirth education is like a must because you don't know what you don't know. Kind of like with your first birth, you didn't know a lot of things that you learned <laughs> from <Yeah>. birth <laughs> um, the second time around. But I think especially in the minority community, when it's an extra cost or something, they're like, oh, or they're just like, oh, my friend had a C-section. I'm going to have a C-section or like, I'm going to go in and get epidural right away because, you know, that's all you do because they don't know, you know. Um, so I think education, especially like if you think about the first time you had to drive a car or something, you had no idea. So there's fear surrounding that. But once you learn more and do like education, then there's less fear. Like once you learn like, oh, this is park, this is reverse, this is drive. Like I'm comfortable doing these things now because I know what it is um, versus walking into anything blind is not, it's never a good idea. Yeah. Especially I, with birth. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, if there's, a, if there's one place to not walk into blind, it might be removing a human from your uterus. Uh, <laughs> vaginally or otherwise I, I say ziplock baggied out of me um, yeah but yeah like, even like you you had your first c-section experience and it sounds like you learned like okay these are the things I'd want and you were able to make those demands like I don't want a repeat of the first time I want a different experience like yeah. even just with that it doesn't have to be with yeah. birth but people which is funny because we don't trust them a lot with our bodies anymore, doctors. But it's like for birth, oh yeah, we trust the doctor. We trust everything the doctor says and we don't question. Well, I think that's a too. I think there's a lot of, I, I don't know if it's necessarily white coat syndrome or not, but just the yeah. idea of, well, you would know. So I guess I'm not allowed to ask or we don't want to see, I mean, gosh, again, as women, as black women, especially like angry black woman is a saying, angry white woman. We've, we've, we've done that down to Karen because heaven forbid we yeah. call us angry white women. <laughs> That's why Karen. I refuse to say Karen. I, I say very clearly angry white woman because if, if it applies to everybody, it applies to us too. Um, but like you don't, yeah. be, you don't want to be that angry person who is, um, you know, combative or, and, and I'm not encouraging people to go in and, and blow up anyone's spot and, be aggressive uh -huh. but assertively asking just saying it's which okay. they will say like a lot of times oh just because you're advocating for yourself like you're combative <laughs> and and you know what you're gonna get people who who absolutely believe in their own like lower case, lowercase n narcissism or they yeah. think it's so long how dare you ask and I do think that providers sometimes, and this is not an admonishment, I, I, I am obsessed with both of my obstetricians. They were spent. Yeah. Houston and one was in Kansas City and amazing. And I, reflecting back, have some notes. And that doesn't mean that they were wrong. And it doesn't yeah. mean anything. It just means that I know more now than I did then. And for, yeah. for some people, luckily not mine, I didn't know what to ask. Some of you know what to ask and you are afraid yeah. to ask. And there are yeah. some writers out there who will be like, how very dare you question me? And they think they're just like, God. 
Yes, I, have the most, I apologize. I have the most intense case of dry mouth. I didn't take a double dose of my Vyvanse or anything today, but. Oh, no. Got in the water, everybody. I'm sorry about that. Um, Extra hydration. Hydration station team. But so there are people out there who will treat you like that. So I don't want it to be like, oh my gosh, there must be a next that I could ask. So like, no one's ever going to be rude to me. They absolutely could be. And yeah, that's a conversation to have. But I always tell mm-hmm. people like, no matter who's paying, if insurance is paying, like they're getting paid to care for you. Yeah. So you are in charge. Like yes. you yes. can say no. Um, Like a yes. good rule of thumb is like, if they're asking you a question, like in labor, like if they're like, mm, we think you might need a C-section. Do you want to do that? Like, it doesn't mean it's like the baby's dying or you're dying because right. if you're dying, they wouldn't be asking. They would just. Oh, no, no. <laughs> hey, so here, what's about to happen? Yes. Yeah, like, okay, we're going back now and they're going to be taking you, you know, like if they're giving yeah. you options or they're like saying the fear mongering is crazy. Like, Oh, if you don't do this, your baby's going to die or come out floppy. They have no idea. They literally have no idea. Yeah. Until it happens. <laughs> Because birth and babies are so unpredictable. Um, but I feel like they do that a lot with all moms. But I feel like because Black moms are less educated, like, they don't, you know, like, they're less to fight back and less to ask questions. And if they are, like, bleeding too much after birth or they feel, like, dizzy or if they feel the C-section, like, the actual tedding happening, I've heard of that. And they're like, no, no, it's fine. And they just were like, okay. Yeah. They just accept it, you know, which is sad. Yeah. But probably some white coat syndrome, I'm sure. Yeah. I think it's just <laughs> all of those things. Like we're told that we have to be demure and not like Jules LeBron, but like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my love, but, uh, and I love that that's a saying that it makes me, it makes me laugh, but, um, but yeah, like we have to be quiet and calm and listen because we don't know. And it's, it's just really not for us to give you all permission to do that, but for you to, mm-hmm. to take and give yourself permission. Yes. Those questions. And you know what? Sometimes the answer might be no. Sometimes <laughs> it might be literally like, no, we can't do that or whatever that might be. And then <clears throat> being able to, but you it. know, you asked. Yeah. 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 So Um, so yeah, well, that's very, that's very cool. Tell us a little bit more about your practice specifically. Like, what does that, where are you, where are people giving birth? What are, how are people finding you? Um, so for doula stuff, I'm real big on social media and I think that's the case. And then like, you just have to know your birth community. Like, obviously there's a lot of people doing a lot of things like everywhere, but there's always the people that are the most busy, the most popular and you make friends with them. Yes. Um, so I'm friends with them and they know me and they send people to me or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I am mostly focused, I would say, on my midwifery stuff because I want to be done and be a midwife. Yes. Um, but yeah, so, and then also like you found me through the Black Women Do Birth Work uh-huh. page, which really I just started to like, because I really, all I'm doing is like reposting other people's stuff you know like just giving more audience to and it kind of started oh man it was during COVID time that's when everyone gets like let me do this random thing um but I think I was on a Facebook message with a doula I've never even met before she's like in Maryland or something and she's like we need a black birth worker page that would be a good idea to have like these great discussions and to like bring light to all these things. And I was like, I like posting on Instagram. I got time. Um, So I started it and I was definitely surprised (laughs) by all the followers all of a sudden. Um, But it's like my heart behind it is still kind of to show everyone, but also black women, because again, education, like you can birth anywhere. You can like be, there are midwives that look like you. There are doulas that look like you. There are doctors that look like you. There are people that are in your corner. Um, You don't just have to, you know, do the standard. I'm going to go to the doctor. And then like also like education about granny midwives. Like we were catching babies. We taught the doctors how to do it like a long time ago. You know, it was midwives and they were mostly black women. They're mostly slaves. But they were catching everybody's babies. They were caring for all the moms, you know. 
Um, and a lot of people don't know that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's so great. <laughs> that's true. The social media of it all is so cool. That's how I've gotten yes. most of my, most of my people who've come on the show as guests. I've found yeah. social media one way or the other, or I found someone on social media and they're like, oh my gosh, you got to have this person on, as you were saying, right? So you've made friends with people and they're like, have you met Lavandria? And it's like, <laughs> and that's what's so beautiful about it. As hateful and heinous as a space social media can be, is it is a beautiful and that's place. What I think is so great. It's like yeah. doing your own Googling. It is tough and scary out there. Mm. Generally, most of us out there who are posting anything, we put a, a trigger warning up. So if you're just not really feeling emotionally in the space, you know, protect <laughs> yourself. Like I'm not really yeah. interested in possibly hearing about pregnancy loss or scary births mm. um, right now. So I'm going to skip that. But later today, or maybe, I don't know, if you have a partner who's not the birthing person, maybe seeing if they might be in an emotional space to do yeah. something to run through some social uh, some social media and say like oh wow i've never heard of this thing and i've never heard of that thing and what's a doula and da 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 and like then you uh. have that conversation together and say like wow look at all the stuff we didn't know we didn't know <laughs> some of this stuff isn't for me and i don't care about it and let's look more into this stuff exactly yeah which i feel like people find you know what they want want to follow but for sure on my regular page, I'm like, if you're following me and you're like a cousin or an aunt, everyone's about to be educated. And if you don't want to be educated, <laughs> just scroll past the post or stop following me. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's helpful just like, you know, helping your community in any any avenue possible in social media is is one that can be helpful in doing that. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and I saw recently, I think it was like today even, that uh, the White House has committed like $500 million annually for women's health research, wow. um, which is so great. I know we love to spend our money in so many places that have so many question marks for me. But again, this is not a political podcast, so we'll move on. From <laughs> I do love the idea of people being more intentional about trying to make sure that women can, the women who want to give birth can do so with the greatest odds of the greatest success because yeah. we're looking into the science behind it. We're looking into the education. Yeah. We're looking into the services. I mean, it is still wild to me that we give birth, C-section or vaginally, and we wait for six weeks and then we're seen once. Yeah. That's it. And it's so crazy. It's so wild, right? Like the privilege that some people have to be able to be like, um, I, and I, that's why I really encourage people. Like if you are pregnant, if you are in fertility, if you are thinking, if you are thinking about trying to conceive, get yeah. you a therapist, establish that relationship, yeah. talking about some of this stuff. And then immediately, I mean, I've literally had clients who were pregnant and like a week, like we just, they gave birth like that, like that Saturday and we met again on Wednesday. And we the emotions are crazy, but I will say- I just am going to market midwifery, but we see you a lot more. Yes. Those part of because we know it's a big shift and your hormones are all over the place and breastfeeding is a challenge. So we see moms typically like two to three days postpartum, two weeks postpartum, and then six weeks. And if we see you at two weeks and you're struggling, we're going to see you at four weeks. We're going to see you again in two weeks. You know, like we're not just going to be like, all right, you had a baby. See you later. Hopefully everything's healing well. Hopefully you don't have any questions. Like It's so wild. Like, of course the baby needs to be seen as much as the baby is seen, but like the baby's seen at one week and two weeks and four weeks and da da And yeah. it should absolutely be that way because that's a tiny But what baby. about the mom? <laughs> and what we're about- seeing the baby too when we see the mom. We see the mom and the baby. Yeah, what about that birthing person? And it's like, they, everybody stop for a moment and contemplate what you were doing six weeks ago. Like- how much has changed in those last six weeks? Yeah. And for some of you, you're like, absolutely nothing, Meg. My life is Groundhog's Day. I need to do the same thing every day. It's six weeks and five weeks and blah, blah, blah. But now when you just popped out a baby. Like- Everything changes. You're like, I'm bleeding. I haven't had any blood for like nine months. And now I'm cramping. I don't know what that is. I haven't had that in a long time. I'm in a diaper. My baby's in a diaper. My baby's yeah, well, the next leaky. thing I was going to say? Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. And then like, it's sunny because we see them, you know, like newly postpartum, like two, three days. And then at two weeks, 
they're like a whole new person the cramping is gone you're like bleeding yes. like the period's about to be over yes you figured out your milk came in you figured out how to breastfeed like you know like you're a whole different person than you were like a week ago so yeah. it's so so yeah. so true so i i just really encourage everybody to look into your insurance benefits or whatever is available yes. to you if, i don't know if you can maybe get into your primary care doctor if you've already said which go get a primary care provider everybody if you don't have one Please yeah. on this podcast and go Google one in your network and get you one because you need an annual physical. You need to be able to take yeah. care of yourself. Like these are the things <laughs> that we don't do for ourselves. Please go do that. Yeah. And because you already have a primary care provider, I wonder if that's an option. If you can't get into your obstetrician's office before six yeah. weeks, your insurance won't pay that's for it. True. Fine. Like, can you just go see that? Can you get a therapist of some sort? There are places. I don't want to espouse the virtues of some of these places that have accessible, affordable care because they don't pay the therapist shit. And I don't want to tell people to go there. <laughs> Our time and expertise. Is I like know that's that. another, don't get on the soapbox. That was, that's what we're, yeah. cause the birth center, I'm like a British shipping ad. She's like trying to like do more with insurance, like Medicaid. Cause if we're seeing a lot of minority moms, guess what they have Medicaid and they pay awful for awful. providers especially out of hospital and we're like we have better outcomes like our moms aren't dying <laughs> why don't you pay us more uh, it's it's again there are so many times i have stopped myself because <laughs> i have go so on the rant <laughs> want to say but this is not a political podcast but like the places that we choose to spend our money it's, it's like this is something that we could easily do instead of sending $20 billion elsewhere, spending $20 yeah. billion dollars on mental wellness. On Yes. And you look at other countries and it's like the standard, like, oh, yeah, you do talk to someone when you're pregnant for your mental health and you do have a doula that comes and you are educated. That's a part of your normal pregnancy, you know, life. It's Yeah. Yeah. Or you do have like a postpartum doula or like lactation support, not like the ones in the hospital. Not that they're awful, but they don't have the time. And sometimes they're not even, they don't, they're not trained, <laughs> trained great. <laughs> they're more nurses than lactation consultant, you know? So like, yeah, we have to pay for the resources that other people are getting for free. Yeah. Like in other countries, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, it's, it's definitely, it's shocking. And certainly other countries have their own idiosyncrasies and issues that are not here, but I just, it's, it's, I don't know, again, it's shocking to me that like we had this beautiful world. And like I said, I was so developed, but our healthcare is like, (laughs) not. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, it's a, this is a podcasting as a, I mean, people who are watching can see that I'm just sitting here with my mouth agape, but people who are listening, dead air is not fun. I just honestly can't comprehend like to see, I was at a Canyon lands and seeing the nature, the beauty of nature and yeah. and just being out there and thinking like, and we created a world with credit scores and for what, <laughs> why? <laughs> like what? Well, I, I genuinely can't make sense of the fact that's what you probably are like I understand the Amish people and like the people that do homesteads like and just are not connected to the world because what is great about all the things <laughs> sometimes it's not yeah I really I really do I really the simpler times with like horses and carriages and you just grow what you got in the backyard and like yeah you it and you just keep on living life it's normal yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I also would not survive any part of the wild, wild west without my Allegra and Singular and Nexium. So I appreciate modern medicine. I appreciate like I, I very rarely is any one thing all one thing. If you if this is not your first time on the show, you've heard me say that um, at least every episode, possibly more. But it is one of those things where it's so confusing. And it's like, how then can we all advocate for each other to have access to safety uh, yeah. and making sure that we're supporting? And that's why I think you know, calling your reps and senators and asking them for more clarification about the ways that they're voting. And um, yeah. it's not like I'm up here and you're lucky to have me. So sit down and don't talk like, no, they're, they are here to represent us and to serve mm-hmm. our interests and us having safe birthing options and practices is in our best interest. Yes. Which I'm happy it's coming more to light, you know, like you would think, but even still like the care is not great and black women are still dying <laughs> and disproportionately so yeah 
which yeah. I mean, I would say even like any regular birthing mom from like the consults that we get from people that have had hospital births and now they're like, I don't want to do that again. Like no matter their skin color or not having great experiences in the hospital, it's just like, oh, we're having a little, like I'm a white woman. So I had a little better time, but it still wasn't great. And then I'm a black woman, so I had a worse time. Like that's, that's basically. Well, we know we don't participate in the trauma Olympics and there are plenty of people out there who do not have melanated skin who can have stories for days. Yeah. We don't participate in the trauma Olympics, but like, yeah, you're, it's just, it really is the bar is pretty low no matter. And so for us to be able to feel empowered to utilize the information that's out there, trusted info, like what you, yes. I'm going to put your link to uh, Instagram in the show notes, but it's black, yeah. women do birth work. black women do birth work. And then I always say too, like, I understand like finances always is a play and like out of hospital is not like free, like going to the hospital could be if you had Medicaid or something, but you can also utilize, like, I think, having a doula is great because I've had stories <laughs> from other moms or just like like a good example is it was during COVID time this mom like was rushed to the hospital like I met her after but I think she ended up having a c-section and I was there just to get her placenta but also like help with breastfeeding or whatever um and the nurse the dad came out and he said the nurse said you can't come in the room and I'm like yes. what I've never heard that and you know what I did I went in the room and I'm like she can tell me Leo she wants to and she didn't so like even though doulas have no like a medical like certificate or background it's like I tell people we hold them to a higher standard because we're a witness we're someone yes. watching yes. and we're someone that knows like this is not okay even if we don't say anything. So like, I think a lot of times just having that person in the room, they're going to treat you better. Yes. Like they didn't say, she didn't say anything to me about not being there. She was like, Oh, cool. Thanks. For, like it was a whole different <laughs> narrative, but like, because they're like, Oh, you're a parent and you don't know anything about anything. We're going to do whatever. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's so interesting, the yeah. spectrum of work that you'll get. Like I had some nurses who I, their faces and names are so prevalent in my mind because they went above and beyond and were amazing. Yeah. Answering questions. And then my first experience, actually, I had brought my pump, which was brand A that I had gotten yeah. through Aeroflow and, um, and the hospital used brand B. And I asked my lactation consultant, I'm like, I'm going to go back to work at 12 weeks and I hope to be able to continue breastfeeding after that. So I'm obviously going to learn how to pump. Can you help me with this? And she was like, that's not the brand we use. And I was like, no. uh, all pumps are pretty dissimilar. <laughs> uh, right. And I, I, um, yeah. And so like, so literally I, I, I we got to get going. I know it's been, I've taken up so much of your time, but like, she literally oh, refused to see me after that. I kid you not literally refused to come see me. I had like pissed her off so much by the fact that I used a different brand as though it's like, I don't know. Anyway, so just Found fun. but there's like a gajillion brands. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm always like, I think to the willingness to learn and like they have the burnout rate too, because they're being worked a lot or whatever. Oh, yes. So that's the other side. But it's still people. People should need to care for people like they're people. Yes. Um, but like if I don't know something, like a lot of times the mom's like, this is happening. And I'm like, okay, like, let's walk through this together. I'm going to learn with you. Yeah. Right. But that's but, it too. And that's that your ability to say like, I don't know, but I'm going to ask and we're going to find out. So mm -hmm. being there to be able to be in that space and just kind of guide those, those situations is so, so very useful. So, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I appreciate you so much. Everybody out there, please go Google, follow Black Women Do Birth Work. I don't care yeah. if you're Black or not. It's amazing information. I follow it. Yeah. And I'm not Black. Like, <laughs> it's up to you to find these people. And those are the people who will find those people and those people and those people. Allow yourself to take in some information. Allow yourself to take up space and ask mm -hmm. questions and all of that. And I'm in Texas, but I try to share, like, people from everywhere. Anyone doing, like, groundbreaking work, like yes. starting a birth center, that there's no birth center and they're Black or, like, trying to cut through the tape of the hospital and their OBs and their, you know, like treating yes. moms with care, like whatever. Yeah. All this stuff. Well, it feels a little um, obtuse for me to say my sign off because today I felt like I was extra judgy and sassy and salty <laughs> the way that we spend our tax dollars. So acknowledging the fact that I was extra judgmental about our healthcare system in this episode. Yeah. 
be curious, not judgmental. And we'll see you next time on the perinatal podcast. <laughs>